All right, day, uh, I actually didn't forget this time, day 182. Uh, like I said this earlier, we're going to see day 200. At this point, I, <laughs> it's like if you're doing a machine and you're at like two plates away from the top of the stack. Come on. If the stack goes to 300, are you really going to do a set of 280? Right? No. You're going to fucking bump it up. But plan for today is arms. Uh, I was... Honestly, I was going to go earlier and go over to Metro, but a eh, 20-minute drive, you know, I got a Planet Fitness right next to me. Well, yeah, so basically my idea was I didn't want to drive, so I'll just go to a gym closer to where I'm at. Uh, you know, I got to choose between the Y or a Planet Fitness. And really, the only thing that's going to you know, influence my decision is the equipment that's at either gym, right? So... For arms, pretty much, at least for my cell of training, every gym is going to be, you know, well-equipped for me to get a tricep pump because, you know, primarily all I'm doing for triceps is pushdowns. You know, I'll throw in some skull crushers and, uh, you know, machine dips too. Skull crushers, you know, a lot more rarely. But, you know, I, for me, I just love fucking pushdowns. I mean, it just makes sense. All my tricep is doing is taking my arm from an extent from a bent position to an extended one, and a tricep pushdown. I can load it up with as much weight as I, uh, well, you know, in most cases, not enough weight as I can fucking move since the stacks are typically a little bit too light. But uh, biceps, that's what's really gonna make me pick the Planet Fitness over the Y, because this. Planet Fitness, uh, the Preacher Curl machine that they have, the Y just doesn't have it, which is, uh, oh, they had one that I fucking loved. It was like a Life Fitness uh, cable Preacher Curl. So normal setup is a normal Preacher, right? The seat, little bench, and uh, but instead of, you know, using an actual handle that's like, you know, it rotates, it was just a cable that was connected to the floor. And I fucking loved it. I was using that back when I was a... Uh, you know, year one, year two lifter. I'd like to think it built my biceps up back then. I don't know why. I, I bet somebody broke it and they just didn't decide to fix it. Not cool. But the Planet Fitness has one that I like. You know, biceps is just going to be curls of whatever fucking variety I want. Right? Dumbbell, uh, cable, machine. But then even in those... Uh, you know, sub-contexts or, uh, you know, subgroups. There's tons of different ways you can do dumbbell curls. There's tons of different ways you can do cable curls, especially with, you know, different attachments and whatnot. Right. Arms is a... There's really no reason why you shouldn't have a pretty fucking wide variety of movements at your disposal for arms. You know, I'm not... Uh, it's not like if you do the same workout over and over again and you make sure you go hard, like, you'll, you'll make some gains, but... There's some legitimacy to the fact that uh, you know you should shock the muscle. You know, don't train it the same way for too long, just to make sure you're uh, you're stimulating all sorts of different fibers and whatnot. But either way, it's about a 10-minute drive to the gym, so I'm not going to drink the pre in the car. I slammed it before I got in the car. So once I get in there, holy shit, this guy's on a hoverboard. What a <laughs> <laughs> so yeah once i get in there and you know put all my shit down and start warming up you know the pre should be kicking in all the way and uh should start to get fucking uh, pretty pumped i made sure to drink a fucking ton of water today i think i'm maybe three liters deep so i would uh i would hope to see a freaky pump maybe these veins are uh gonna be a signal of what's to come but uh, whatever, whatever, enough of that. Let's uh, let's get started with triceps. All right, so I've kind of been starting off my fucking tricep workouts with this. So two long kind of individual handles, and then instead of going overhand like normal, I'm kind of starting off like more of in a neutral grip-ish, almost even underhand slightly. But then once I get down to the bottom of the rep, it's almost more like a and eh, neutral grip-ish, like a rope. Whatever, you know, just another kind of movement you can throw in your fucking uh, inventory. 
but you know, it actually took me a little longer to warm up today than normal. Like for triceps, my go-to warm up is I just grab the single arm handle for push downs. You know, I start with like maybe 20 pounds, just move it around a lot, but my elbows are feeling a little tender, right? But after like five sets are really light, just moving it around. And th those sets were not working sets. They were just, you know, moving the weight around, getting some blood flow in the area. And now my fucking elbows go ready to go. So if you've got elbow problems and they're not like brutally serious, just take some extra time warming up. I swear it'll work. So I think uh, I'll probably just spam these for a couple sets like normal. Four more. No drop sets or anything fancy. That's enough of this. My fucking triceps are already pumped. Oh my god. I don't know what I'll do next. I'll, uh, I'll think about it for a minute. Whoever guessed machine dips, you're right. So, if those first sub push downs were kind of, you know, stretch emphasized, these ones, you know, I'm not gonna be able to bend my arm as much. So, I'm not gonna get as good of a stretch. But, I'll be able to squeeze at the bottom way harder. So honestly, I think three sets here should be perfect. <sighs> So I don't usually do drop sets now. Uh, I've gone through periods where literally almost every set was a drop set. The logic with it is, you know, you burn out with a heavy weight and then, you know, you drop the weight and you can really squeeze the fuck out of, you know, whatever you're hitting. But uh, let's move on to something else. The last two sets, I'm gonna do this uh, sort of cross body tricep extension. So, you know, grab the one on the left with my right hand, the one on the right with my left hand, right? And rather than doing a normal push down like this, right, the cables are sort of pulling each hand in the opposite direction in which I'm, uh, you know, straightening my arms. Going light on this, you know, I get a, just a crazy squeeze. And that pretty much fits my logic with training, is I want to do some heavy, you know, legit sets in the beginning of the workout, right? Like if we we're doing chest, obviously I'm going to start off with heavy pressing instead of flies, but towards the end, right, I'm trying to just finish the, off the fucking pump. So lighter weight, really squeezing will pretty much do the trick. So two sets here and then uh, we can start curls. Oh. <sighs> 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 
Oh, fuck. So with lighter sets like those, and especially on movements where you can get some partials out, like obviously those first few reps were pretty much to completely the straightened position and then back, right? As that set went on, it wasn't like a set of bench where I reached a certain point where I just couldn't do another rep and it was gonna crush me. It's almost like a battle of attrition. It's like, oh, my fucking triceps are burning. Come on, guy. You get what I'm saying? So the harder you can go, the better. But uh, let's get some curls started. Okay, so, I mean, you know, I say this every fucking arm day. By the time I'm done with all those push downs or dips or whatever else, you know, my forearms have been pretty much activated from gripping onto the handles. You know, my shoulders have been moved around. You know, I feel pretty loose. The only thing that isn't warm is my biceps. So, you know, unlike when I warm up for chest, when I have to warm up my tries, my shoulders, a little bit of back, and then my chest itself, all I had to do was curl the 30s for like five, then the 50s for five. Actually, no, I think I only did the 50s for what, three or something? Whatever. And then the 75s for two, just kind of as a, as a feeler. So whenever I curl above, you know, 50 pounds-ish, I always like to throw some, well, in this case now, some hostile straps on. Just because, you know, it's, it's enough weight for going through the motion of a curl. If you're not using straps, you're going to get a fucking forearm pump. Right, and I'm trying to divert all my energy directly into my fucking biceps. So let's, uh, let's throw the 75s around, see how many reps I can get. Okay, let's, uh, oh, damn. Those felt lighter today than my last arm day. Interesting. But, uh, yeah, so I think one more here. You know, like, this will constitute the main heavy, I mean, in all honesty, swinging curls. You know, because towards the end of the set, I was kind of swinging them. It's almost like the equivalent of a compound lift for biceps, right? Whereas more of an isolation would be, like, light creature fills. Obviously, they're both working the biceps, but you get what I'm saying. One hit, one more here, maybe two, and then let's, uh, let's move on to something else. All right, let's move on to some kind of uh, some kind of something. So, I'll attempt a Dorian Gates quote here. Uh, whether or not it's verbatim, you know, who gives a shit? But a big muscle is a strong muscle, right? If you want to get bigger, you got to get stronger. You, know, you could come in here and do a hard workout with like, you know, light weight. Like, let's say I just did a set of curls with um, like the 30s 
instead of the 75s. Maybe, okay, maybe the 35s, whatever. That'd be lightweight for me, right? And I could do really slow controlled reps, get a really good fucking burn. You know, and after eight sets of that, or, you know, 11 like I usually do, I would be fucking fully pumped, same as if I went heavy. But you're not going to get stronger by doing, you know, weights that are well within your, uh, you know, your strength capacity, right? That's sort of why in my mind, the, let's say in a, in a very basic sense, the first part of the lift is going to be heavy sets, right? Heavy weight, moving around a lot of fucking uh, well, weight, right? Tons of tension on the muscle. And then towards the end of the lift, transition more so into lighter sets where you go slower, you really fucking squeeze, really control reps, right? I say this all the time. I think an even combination of those two styles of sets is going to give you some fucking gains. But then, you know, in an overarching sense of working out, no matter what you do, as long as you go hard, you'll make some gains. So, you know, don't take every piece of advice I say without, you know, digesting it logically into your brain. You know, if I say something that's fucking stupid and you just listen to it, then what the fuck, right? So that's your responsibility as the viewer to sort of ask me, you know, introspectively, does this make sense or am I just listening because he's big? I think everybody can take that advice. But I did hear some single arm preachers. Uh, I say this every time I use this machine. I don't care for the handle that's already here. So what I do is I slip a D handle around it and it gives my wrist a little bit more mobility. Because if I just use the handle, it fucking kind of hurts. So a few sets here. Pretty heavy too. The stack is 200 and this will be 150. So still in the heavy section of the lifts. You know what? Fuck it. A little heavier. What am I thinking? 170. I think I was too heavy, but I'm still gonna do it for the other side. You know, again, fucking even though it's the end of the workout, this fucking stack just isn't heavy enough. And this isn't even a machine where you can really add weight because of the, the actual weight pin is sort of recessed into it. But it's still enough weight for, uh, you know, relatively controlled squeezing set for, I don't know, 20? We'll see. But I'll just do one here and then move on to a uh, laying cable curl. Oh shit. This means this machine's a little hard on my wrists, but super good movement path. You've almost got no choice but to squeeze the fuck out of your biceps at the top. So let's move on to my last set and then uh, we can check the pump. I do like doing like an easy bar, I guess this face right towards it, like an easy bar curl, like standing up with the cable on the floor. But I, I then I kind of feel like I'm balance, trying to balance myself. So, you know, the whole point of bodybuilding training, maybe not the whole point, but a big one, is being able to actually isolate the muscle that you're trying to work, right? If I'm trying to work my biceps, I don't want to be spending energy, you know, on my lower back trying to hold up the weight or fucking, you know, balancing, whatever, right? That's why when I do face pulls, I don't do them standing up, right? I'll lay down on a bench and pull the, uh, pull the weight towards me. So I don't have to worry about, you know, balancing my body. So same logic here, you know, same curl as the, a normal standing easy bar curl, or, you know, easy, 
easy bar cable attachment curl. But instead of having to stand up, you know, I'm just laying down. So moderate weight. I'm really just gonna try to fucking burn out and finish off this pump. In the best case scenario, it would uh, it would blow my skin off. I'm, I don't know if I'm uh, that pumped, but may as well aim high. <laughs> Okay, fuck it, a little heavier, what am I thinking? And with that, arms is fucking complete. Whew. Let's go check it out. All right. So, I can say with a, well, not even with a fair degree of certainty, I'm certain that if I, uh, if I didn't drink so much water today, I would not be as pumped as I am right now. A good gauge of whether or not you're pumped after arms, well, you know, if you're big enough, then, you won't be able to touch your fucking shoulder with your hand. Yeah, no fucking chance. So let's uh, let's just see what we're working with under the hood. All right. Come on, get the fuck off. <laughs> oh man. My fucking shirt always gets caught on my upper back when I'm trying to take this shit off. All right. So just by look, oh man, fuck. One thing about a crazy bicep pump is like, my natural standing position is like this, right? My arm isn't completely straight. So when I straighten it out all the way, oh, it feels like I'm fucking stretching out my biceps. Oof. All right, all right let's see what uh, let's see what we're working with. <laughs> this fucking mantis pose for me I feel like it looks a lot crazier when I'm diced because it uh especially when you're sideways and you really suck in your stomach Right? It just makes your midsection disappear. But uh, that's more of just a observation, not really a tip. Just gotta get a few more and then we can get out of here. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. I say this every arm day. You know, I fucking love a good arm pump. <laughs> Is it a... Uh, I don't fucking know, man. Just having big ass arms. Oof. I tell you what, it is, uh, that would be a good problem to have. <laughs> Overdeveloped arms. I feel like they could definitely, uh, use a few more inches. So, still chasing that elusive 20 inch cold number. Whether or not I'll actually be able to get it this bulk uh, to be determined. Obviously, I'm going to go for it, right? But, Pumped right now, they're probably, I, I should have brought a measuring tape, but, but right now pumped, I'd say they're probably 19 and a, eh, eh, 19 and a half for sure, maybe 19 and three quarter, maybe, that would be being a, a little generous if I'm just estimating, but obviously triceps, you know, I hit the whole fucking tricep, I hear a lot of people talk about, um, you know, targeting different parts of your biceps with different kinds of curls, right? Like, obviously, working the outside. Hey, you can't really see it too much now. I'm not really lean enough, but this little muscle right here, all right, this little scallop, the brachialis. I always hear people talk about working that with reverse curls, right? Or uh, even hammer curls a little. I mean, 
there's probably some validity to that idea. But, you know, for me, when I do normal fucking alternating dumbbell curls and then machine curls and then uh, I will say those easy bar curls, I do feel that uh, on this outside section a lot, right? Because you are sort of, like you're not only just curling straight towards your, your shoulder like this, you're almost kind of doing this motion, right? As if you're doing curls with a rope. Like, in that sense, you can definitely kind of work the outside a little more. But I wouldn't get too hung up on your, uh, your exercise selection for buys, right? As long as you do a couple different movements each lift and you do sort of circulate through a variety of them oh, across different lifts, you're gonna work the whole fucking bicep, right? This sort of goes for a lot of different muscle groups. But you know, I think people get hung up on the specifics way too much, right? Like making sure you're, oh, man. like for me, I have never like learned the names of the different fucking parts of your quad. Like I always hear people like, oh, you're gonna wanna do leg extensions with your foot pointed outward to work the medial femoralis. I don't know, man, just fucking, <laughs> I'm just trying to fucking hit whatever muscle group I'm aiming at as hard as possible and finish the lift with a pump, right? If you do, like I kind of recommend, probably eight to 12-ish sets for a single muscle group in a lift, as long as you fucking hit it hard and you're pumped at the end of it, like, you know, really pumped, guess what, you had a good lift, right? I'd rather put more energy into like, you know, those last few reps of a set where I'm like, <clears throat> then have to think like, all right, I wanna, I wanna really activate my brachioradialis on this movement. You know, it's uh, it does warrant some, some knowledge of training and, you know, variability and whatever, and like targeting different sections of your muscles, whatever. But that's not the main idea, right? I think the people that get the biggest are the ones that can just go into the gym on a consistent basis and just go crazy. You know what I'm saying? So let's, uh, yeah, let's just go slam the cluster dextrin shake and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Holy shit. There we go. So it's fucking raining out. I was about to say some shit like, I don't understand why people get so upset by the, uh, you know, when it's bad weather. But then I realized, yeah, wait, I do understand why you people get fucked up about, uh, you know, gloomy weather. It's because you're all vitamin D dependent. Well, okay, when I say you people, I'm kind of emphasizing just people in general. Right. But, yeah, you guys don't fucking take your vitamins. So no shit if you're not getting enough sunlight. You're going to be vitamin D deficient and you're going to fucking, you know, more than likely be more prone to feel like shit. Right. Just another real life example of why you should fucking take your vitamins. Apart from the fact that it's, you know, going to help you build more muscle which is usually the, uh, the context in which the advice I give you is, you know, trying to emphasize, right? You know, <laughs> pretty much all the tips I ever fucking say are just, you know, in the, uh, in the spirit of trying to get bigger. And then once I start dieting, it'll be in the spirit of trying to stay big while losing weight. But I thought that was kind of funny. So let's, uh, let's slam this and then get out of here. Still alive. Coat Sam CDX. Buy one tub of freaking cluster dextrin. Get another one free. Like I said, I will tell you when that's over. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? So, yeah, so those heavy curls in the beginning, you know, sure, the form started to break down a tad. But no other bicep movement that I did in that workout had the same amount of tension as those heavy curls in the beginning. You know, I, I swear, I mean, it doesn't have to be so complicated, right? You know, sure, I do whatever kind of movements I want or feel like doing whatever, but when you boil it down, all I do in all my workouts is, you know, try to start off moderately to legitimately heavy. You know, sometimes when I do, um, 
uh, let's say hamstrings or something. Sometimes I'll start off and just do lighter squeezing sets. But, you know, for the most part, I always start off with some kind of heavy compound, right? Chest would be heavy pressing. Legs would be squatting, usually, but now I've kind of been chilling out on that. Uh, back, you know, pull downs or rows, whatever I want to start with, heavy. Today, biceps, so I can start off with heavy curls. Uh, triceps, what a... Oh yeah, those... Uh... Triceps was a little different. That was a weight which I could manage, but I made it a little bit extra difficult, right? Because if I were to do just normal straight bar pushdowns, right, I'd be able to get way more than the 20 reps I was doing with those two individual handles, right? That'd be, it's, it's, it's not like it, but it's pretty comparable. Well, I guess it is like it. It's like doing pushdowns with a rope, you know? It's, it's just a more difficult movement. You can, you can use lighter weight and squeeze harder, right, and fatigue yourself more. But yeah, you know, heavy shit in the beginning, lighter squeezing stuff towards the end, and then when you're pumped, you're pretty much fucking done, you know? Like I was saying before when I was doing those preacher curls, progressive overload, it gets thrown around, you know, everybody's fucking talks about progressive overload, and people talk about it for a fucking reason, right? It's legit. If you wanna get stronger, oh no, okay, what am I talking about? We want to get bigger. That's our goal here. But if you do want to get bigger, right, mass moves mass, to an extent, you're going to want to prioritize getting stronger as well, right? Obviously, I'm not a power lifter, so that's not my main goal. Uh, well, it's not even really one of the main goals. It's It just kind of comes with the fucking, with the size, right? But I'm not doing five by fives or, you know, triples or shit like that where the main goal is legitimately just strength gain. Right? I do think that just as a normal lifter, if you do heavy bench, you know, for an actual set of eight where you fail fresh in your workout, you're, and you, you know, and you eat at least a decent amount of protein and food, you're going to build strength over time. Come on. Getting off on, getting off on some kind of tangent. I don't even remember where I was going with that. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So heavy stuff in the beginning. Lighter, squeezing shit where it really fucking burns towards the end. Then you're going to be fucking pumped. You know, I can't emphasize that enough. So if somebody was saying, uh, I read one comment. I was like, so should getting a pump be the an indicator of a good workout? Uh, I don't think, I'm not like mocking him. I'm just trying to use a different voice to, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying. Uh, he was like, is a pump, you know, an indicator that you had a good workout? You know, if I leave the gym without a pump... Does that mean I didn't do a good lift? And, I, was, and I, I said to him, like, you know, to an extent, yeah, I fucking pretty much believe that, right? I, I don't really think I could imagine a good chest day where I don't get a pump, right? It's not, that's not to say, like, the, uh, that's not to say that the pump is, like, the only cue that you had a good lift, right? Or a good and a progressive lift, you know, because I could get a fucking freaky chest pump just by sitting on the pec deck and doing light flies, right? So the pump isn't the only goal, right? Like I was just fucking saying, do some heavy shit in the beginning too, right? I don't want to say break down the fibers, but yeah, pretty much fucking break down the fibers. And then once you're pretty fatigued, fill the fucking muscle up with blood, lighter sets, you're going to grow. You're going to freaking grow. So, plan now, uh, eat some kind of food, not exactly sure what, perhaps, this has been some of my circulation of food where I like actually go out and get it, uh, I've been doing some spicy chickens from Wendy's, Kroger Sushi, sometimes I'll get one of their little, uh, what's it called, like a fucking... You know, where it's like a rice bowl and they got like cut up tuna in it. I love those. Or, you know what, really? F I've been getting fucking pissed off at B-dubs. Because I'll order, like, you know, I'll go pick it up and I'll like order a thing of boneless wings, right? Personally, I don't, like, I don't prefer boneless, but it's just easier to eat. You don't have to deal with fucking bones and make it a mess. But every fucking time I get them, it's like just bread, like, half the fucking bits in there are just breading with no meat. 
And, uh, you know, the first time I did, I was like, okay, well, fuck, I guess I'm just unlucky. But I went back again, same shit. That's fucked. So maybe I'll get a fucking thing of traditional wings this time so I don't get fucking disappointed. But, you know, calories are calories. If you eat enough fucking food, you're going to grow. And I think that's the most important part about bulking. And then, you know, the vice versa, the inverse is true as well. You know, calories are calories, so the less food you eat, the more fucking weight you're going to lose. That's the most important part of dieting. You know, once I start dieting, I'll get into all sorts of uh, tips and tricks about it. It'll be easier for me to break down, you know, what kind of food I'm eating and shit like that, just because there will be less of it to get into. But that'll be in about a month. That'll be in about a freaking month. So... Hopefully you had a good lift, are having a good lift, if you're watching this right now, while lifting, or will have a good lift if you're watching this pre-gym. So, like I said, time to go home and eat, and then fucking pass out. All right, that's another fucking key, key component of training, getting some good sleep. So, legs tomorrow, squats most likely on the agenda. Let's see how those fucking feel. So I will see you then.